is this a fitness game? No. Aha, uh -huh, but is this game fun? Uh, I think we need to talk about it. So I discovered Carve last year sometime and I was really intrigued because it's snowboarding and all you use is your hands. How are you gonna snowboard with your hands? It doesn't make sense. So I had to check it out. So I bought it. That's why there's no paid promotion thing up here. I bought it with my own money. And when I bought it, I played the hell out of it. So don't get me wrong. I love the Quest too, if you hadn't noticed. But one of my biggest issues with it is that they okay a lot of games to the main store that are charging $20, $30 that may not be worth it. And when I say may not be worth it, I'm not talking about opinion of a game. I'm talking about the length, the depth, the amount of stuff in the game. Sadly, Carve falls into this category. It's polished, but it seems unfinished. It feels like an extended demo of a snowboarding game. Like, here's the beta testing, try it out. But let's go on a journey and I'll tell you all the good and the bad about Carve, because who knows, you might be interested in it. So one of the reasons I checked out Carve is because I know for a fact that snowboarding is a hell of a workout. It's like your leg day times a thousand. I mean, I know this, but the last time I went snowboarding was literally 23 years ago. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. So in preparation for this video, I took a little mini vacation. I took a trip to Jim Thorpe. If you don't know anything about Jim Thorpe, it's up in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. And it's about a hour or so drive from Philadelphia, which is where I live. Don't don't come knocking on my door, please. Or do, let's, ha let's have a beer. Uh. So I took a day and went to Blue Mountain and went snowboarding for a while. It was really fun, but wow, I'm old. And I felt every single crash. But I'm not just here bragging about my vacation stays. I really wanted to see how this game mimicked real snowboarding so i took to the slopes and yeah <laughs> when it turns out i fucking suck at snowboarding by the way i definitely felt my age with every single fall and fall i did i must have ate shit about a dozen times but you know what after a while i got the hang of it and the runs were getting easier and i would only fall like two times and i probably should have googled how to snowboard first but Oh well. But snowboarding is tough for this city boy. So let's see if Carve has as steep of a learning curve as real snowboarding. Oh, by the way, if you've been watching my videos and finding them enjoyable or helpful, don't forget to hit the like button because when you hit the like button, it helps my video get seen by more people and will help my channel grow. It's also free and easy. Thanks, bro. So opening up the game, you see there's basically two modes time attack and freestyle. As you play, you unlock boards, gloves, and tape by doing tricks, meeting achievements, and collecting tokens spread out through each course. Also, oh my God, there's a puppy. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now here's the big question. How do you actually control the board? Well, with your hands. Your hands are basically your feet in this game. Which kind of makes sense because you do use your hands to balance and control your core when you're real life snowboarding. But I feel like this would make more sense if I was controlling my character in the third person as opposed to the first person. Especially when I'm doing spins as tricks. It, it, I'm basically rotating my body around but my head is staying the same way which is, I don't know, kind of creepy. I enjoy how you do tricks but I'm really not invested enough in the game to pull off anything crazy. I kind of just grab the board and wave it around and hope something cool happens. Like Mortal Kombat. Sometimes it does, sometimes I hit a rock. A quirky feature that I like is when you wipe out, your goggles get covered in snow and you have to brush them off with your hand. It's pretty funny. I prefer this to the concussion you get when you actually hit shit in snowboarding. It's not pleasant. Another thing I enjoy is the amount of customization you can do here. Unlocking different mixtapes and gear is definitely essential for games like this. And the soundtrack is tight. Ooh. Folks, I definitely just said tight in a video, which means I'm super old. Did you know the word tight is now an aged word? It's not cool anymore, turns out. But you know what that means? It's gonna make a comeback and all the kids are gonna start saying it soon, so. That's pretty tight. Usually I hate in-game soundtracks, but this one is solid and fits the theme really well. I'll admit, I'm not great at this game, unless I'm being awarded for petting dogs. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Oh wait, it did give me an award for that. Okay. But as much as I wanna give this game a glowing review and tell you all to go out and buy it, I just can't. You know me, I'm honest to a fault and I can't recommend this game. And here's why. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem is it's so basic. There's just not enough here to keep me coming back and playing more of it. Again, that's the thing I was telling you about earlier that the, the Quest 2 store has is a lot of like 
extended demos, like Richie's Plank Experience. And for a price of $19.99, that ain't gonna cut it for me. I need something more. That's a lot of money to pay for a game. Once you've played through all the courses, there's just not much to come back to. There's no replay value. I really was hoping this was gonna be kind of a meditative experience where I could kind of go through the slopes on my own and just kind of sit with my thoughts, as scary as they are. But the courses don't last long enough for me to get into that flow state. About three minutes, they're done, and that's a bummer. Here's where I think the biggest problem is. It's trying too hard to be realistic. And honestly, I don't think the VR space is somewhere where snowboarding should feel realistic, and that's totally fine. Maybe when full body tracking becomes a thing, this could stand a chance, but right now, it doesn't. What I wish Carve would do is lean into the fantasy portion of this, like an over-the-top SSX tricky game where I can do impossible stunts with ridiculous Easter eggs and missions. Also, if this was a single stage in like a shooter or a bigger game, I would totally give it a pass, and I wouldn't be nearly as judgy. And trust me, I love being judgy. It's one of my favorite hobbies. I mean, come on, look at me. I'm on YouTube. You gotta have some kind of judginess going. But as a full game on the quest, it's just a little too boring for me and I just, I don't get it. I just don't have any desire to return. The other thing I can't handle is the way you stand kills your neck. You have to remember, when you're snowboarding, your positioning is lateral, but your view is forward. So when you're facing one way and looking the other wearing a headset, Playing for a longer period of time really hurts your neck. This could just be me because years of boxing and CrossFit has basically turned my neck into a wet spaghetti noodle. The positive here is that I think Carve has laid a nice foundation for future snowboarding games. It has a very The Climb feel to it, but it just, it's not as challenging and it's not as fun to play as The Climb. However, I think the developers could learn a lot from what works and what doesn't work. Any developers developing skiing, snowboarding, or skating games can learn a lot by playing this and should definitely use it as a jumping off or starting point. It's just not enough to entertain the average VR user for long enough. That could just be my opinion, but maybe if you're really into snowboarding and you're just you can't hit the mountains just yet? Let me know in the comments if you've played Car before and how you like it or didn't like it. My name is Ari with Fit Pro VR and don't forget to get your workout in today.